So we can call a meeting to order. Uh, do we have any citizens comments? No citizens here. No citizens. Okay. Um, um, oh, and me. Oh, here they come. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Scarlett. So we can go ahead and consider take a look at the October minutes. Um, if we had a chance to peruse them, any comments, problems, motion to approve. Second. Second. <laughs> Hang on, Matthew is with us. I didn't realize he was online. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm promoting the panelists. Mm -hmm. So he'll disappear and then he'll fill up on the other side. There he is. Hi, Matthew. Hi How's everyone? We were just considering the minutes. Uh, from October, right? And so, um, all those in favor of approval, saying five, saying aye. Somebody needs to move. Somebody move? Yes, we have moving. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion. A second. You were busy on the screen. Sorry. We're moving along here. Aye. <laughs> aye. All right. It's, it's approved. Okay, administrative reports. One thing I wanted to touch base and talk a little bit about is the the board's restructuring and sort of what it means for us, uh, and, you know, beginning in a little over a year, right? Uh, pres sort of preservation, we're moving into uh, the two other groups to form a new committee called uh, Community Sustainability and Economic Development. Um, and the way this is going to work, I think there's pretty much, this is pretty much set there. They're going to do it this way is that for this year, any appointments that we need to make to this board will be one year appointment only. So a year from now. Mary Ellen and Marilyn. Are the two, Mary Ellen and Marilyn are the two people whose terms would be up. Okay. Who They have both agreed to um, okay. continue. Oh, okay. For that year. Okay. Um, so we're, we'll be set there, but we still need to replace two, New uh, positions, right? No, the commission in the, during this interim year period are not filling any vacancies on any boards oh. because they don't. By the time somebody would get acclimated, then they may not. Yeah. So Matt, when, just say, Matt, when's your term up? Do you know. I started with Matt and I started. Uh, I want to say I've got another year. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so that will. Give us enough for a quorum. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. Uh, so, uh, because of that, I mean, we need to at least think about filling some of the vacancies that we have right now with some of the stuff that we have going on. And um, I talked to Mary Ellen about taking over, sort of overseeing the finishing up with the historic signage. And when we get to that, we'll go over and updates to. Where we are with that, but I mean, we're pretty far along with that. I mean, what advantage we have is that and brick streets where we've done a lot, and so we're sort of wrapping up some a lot that type of stuff before we sort of create this new committee structure. And we're not really sure how exactly that's going to work. Um, I think there will be three of us that will still be around to go into the new committee. Well, they would count too. I would think. I mean, they can apply, but I don't know. I don't know how it's going to. Yeah. Maybe Mindy can give us more. I, I feel like the structure was set up so that anybody who is here would not be turned away. Here she comes, so she can enlighten us on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hi, Mindy. Well, Hi. Right. So we were just thinking about how this change is going to take place next year oh the um boards realignment right. yeah um, um you want me to well, is it on the agenda 
I was just talking about it as part of my comments uh, oh, okay. about thinking about it now yeah. and, and the, the structure and what it means. Now we have, there were our, I guess there are just two of us, Carmine and I, who have our current appointments who will, are, aren't are up until 2025. So we um, both just re, re up last year. I have some notes on it. Do you want to? Have a discussion about it now, or I've got some stuff to kind of talk about it. Or do you want to? Is it somewhere else you want to talk about on the agenda? No, we can talk about it now. Okay, cool. It's about, you know, the, in terms of sort of the administrate administering the committee, we need to think a little bit about how this is all going to work, and mm -hmm. how many members we'll actually have who will be transitioning over into this new committee. Then, how that's going to work. Um. So the specific members who are trans transferring over, that's not 100% yet. I, don't, I, I have the spreadsheet of who's eligible to do it and we'll ask them, but just because we ask people doesn't mean they'll necessarily commit. Um, but I, I think the most important part is to talk about what we want that board to look like long-term. So there'll be that, that kind of interim phase where some people are transferring over, but who, what kind of skills do we want on that combined board or need on that combined board and want to kind of set in there. And there's going to be the ordinance level, but there's also going to be like a work plan or charter for the board, which are a little different. The ordinance will be something that will vote on and it'll be, you know, voted on somewhat soon, but we'll have all of this year to finalize what we want that work plan slash charter. We'll, say, we'll call it the charter, that board's charter to be. And that could include the details of we need these types of skills. Um, I, I think it would be a little easier if we did, you know, if we kind of separate the who exactly it is and who, who do we need, like what kind of skills do we need? And so for that, I wanted to go through with you the notes that I took back in November, the last time we met. It's true. November, October. Oh, yeah. October was the last October. official meeting. Officially, yeah. October, yeah. But and then we, we talked in we November. Had discussion because we, yes. the meeting you had had, we went ahead and had a discussion about some of the specifics. And so if it's, is it, if it's okay with everybody, I, we could go through for like 10 minutes now. And I wanted, I took the notes that we made and I wanted to talk about it with the whole board and kind of work through it and add to it. What it is it that what is it that we really feel like is essential will continue long term? So, yeah, I think that that'll work for now. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay, um, and, and then we can talk about what skills that we need, and like a sec the part two of that conversation if there's time today, or we can do that next uh, next meeting. Um, and we have the whole year at least to kind of flush it out. So. Which isn't a ton of time, but it is, you know, not like it has to be offered or not. Okay, so um, as Phil mentioned, who had who else was there in November? Yeah, it was and Mary Ellen, they were online. Yeah, man, man. so it might some of this might be review. Um, but the main thing that we wanted to capture in that meeting is that there's a concern that the charter and the mission will become lost in the new merger. This is the most complicated board, that advisory board that we have. It includes the Environmental Sustainability Board and the EDC, the Economic Development Council. Um, and it, Andrew and Flynn and I have been going back and forth about it a couple times a week lately. Just it is going to be complicated. I, for this reason, I moved over to be the liaison for the ESB now. So. Um, so I have a better understanding about what their you know, charter is and their work plan is. So I have two of the three boards and then Andrew has the EDC. So we're able to kind of talk, but the board chairs or whoever is really interested, as long as it doesn't hit a quorum, um, I think it would be really helpful if we had a couple subcommittee meetings and talk through this a little bit more in detail as well over the course of the year. So that's, that's just kind of like setting the um, context. Fortunately, we do have really strong staff liaisons. Laura, you've been on this board for how many years now? Since 2018. Yeah. Okay, so you know what the charter and mission is and has been historically in the past. And even though you weren't the liaison before 2018, you were very involved in the municipality and saw the working done. So it's, um, same thing on the ESB and the EDC. Um, so one of the concerns is, well, actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to say there's a couple areas that I highlighted, and then we can go into what it means. One is recruiting historic preservation experts and maintaining those and retaining those experts on the board long term. The next one is, fun, is really getting solid and clear on what our current charter is. 
with regards to the HPV. Um, the next one is the historic district. That's key. We have to maintain, and we may want to possibly consider expanding the historic district. That's been conversations in the past, and I'm sure it'll be long term. Um, the fourth one is regulatory support and oversight for developments in our historic district, such as the FCC requests. Um, the sixth one is historic com um, educational components. So like occasionally that's events, national speakers, that's the last one was good design makes sense. Um, the seventh one of my on is HPV serves as a resource for residents who are doing home construction. And the last one is brick streets preservation. Is there any other, we can go into what those mean, but is there any other broad areas that are really missing? Yeah, you hit on the name one story. Yeah. We talked about last time. Yeah. <laughs> you hit them all. Okay. I, I, I'm just checking my notes. <laughs> Anybody online have anything? Like the broad topics. Sorry, my dogs are being incredibly noisy. I wasn't at the November meeting and I'm, and I'm not, aside from looking at the minutes, I'm not uh, clear on the details of what was addressed. Okay, that's okay. That's totally no problem. Um, we know there wasn't a quorum. And so we want to go through and have a discussion now about what um, work needs to carry on long-term. That's right. related. I'm going to go ahead and just take some notes too. Hopefully other people take notes. So just so I'm clear, this new board, Community Sustainability and Community Development. Economic development, yeah. E yeah. Wait, say it again. And economic development. Oh, economic. Environmental okay. sustainability. And then us, historic. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm, which boards are consolidating it to the new board? Um, you said it's EDC, Economic Development? Yeah, Economic Development Council and Historic Preservation Board. And... Um, environmental sustainability. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's a little more complicated. You, um, well, we can talk about the other boards if you care or what, unless it's distracting. There's there's other advisory boards and they're consolidating in a different way. Um, no, it totally makes sense. I just wanted it a little more. It's not a super neat fit though. This one is a little tricky. It is. It definitely is. But it make it does make sense yeah. when you're talking For about example, sustainability. Another one of them is the parks, the parks advisory board, and the sports advisory board are getting together. But that makes sense because they're using some of the same spaces and right. so they have some of the same purposes, even though they may do it differently. Parks and rec, yeah. Um, and then there's going to be another another board that's I think going to be really interesting called mobility. Yes. That'll include the traffic board, the parking board, but it also will. And, and capture all of the other pieces that really aren't miss that are currently missing from an advisory board perspective about how people want to move around the community. Obviously, pedestrians, public transportation, but there could be lots of other options, bikes, e-bikes. I don't know um, what's going to kind of percolate to what's going to fit with our community and what people really want. So, mobility will be, I think, a very interesting board that has its own challenges. Um, so if it means if it's good, is it good you want to talk through each what each of these are a little bit more and flush them out? Like what what kind of well, the first one is recruiting historic preservation experts. What do we really want in that? Like do you want to have is it okay to well so, I think some of those are gonna certainly overlap. If you've mm -hmm. got an historic preservation expert, they're the person that can help with the responses to uh federal section 106 requests, yeah. you know, those types of things that I've been handling. Uh, we'll know the ins and outs of how to respond to those. And uh, so there, you know, is some overlap and uh, in looking at, at those things, but those, yeah, those, all those do sort of cover the areas of responsibility. I mean, saying that a historic preservation specialist is sort of like specifying a person mm -hmm. rather than an area of responsibility, but that yeah. basically you want to cover some of the the regulations and things that'll hit the municipality, the people on board. If they don't know what those regulations are, mm -hmm. we might lose something. <laughs> you know, uh, is you know one of the actually main one of the big reasons for having a historic preservation board. If you have an historic district, most places that have an historic district do have some type of preservation board. 
to, yeah. to, to manage the district, you know, <laughs> overall and the legal requirements and so forth, or to keep your district <laughs> because you don't. It does have. It does happen that some communities have lost their historic district by not paying attention and uh, allowing, allowing it to to lapse. Basically. One of the other historically things that. Um, deliverable that came out of the Historic Preservation Board when PennDOT was taking the bricks out of Castle Shannon Boulevard. Um, restoring bricks was not an option for them, but PennDOT was not going to do it. It's not part of their plan. So it was the Historic Preservation Board that requested and received mitigation, which was that PennDOT report that was used for the brick streets. That was done because the Historic Preservation Board said, you are making a change to the historic district. It is having a um, negative impact on the district. Therefore, we are going to request something from you uh -huh. and part of that negotiation is what this board worked on right. but but the regular regulatory authority there was actually the state historic preservation office who basically once we're forcing the mitigation to occur the board becomes the consulting party saying well this is what we want you know um but the problem problem is that if you don't have that voice and you're not aware that you need to speak up at certain points in time you can lose and not get anything mm -hmm. and by something can be destroyed as we had happen with that one of those uh, Wi-Fi towers recently where they sort of pretended like they consulted right. with us right. and even though we issued a comment they didn't submit it till after the fact and I caught them and they got in all kinds of trouble mm -hmm. but they were going to they were basically going to be establishing precedent for what these Wi-Fi towers would look like throughout our historic district if that had gone happened and gone through so we just need to be have somebody on the board that's aware of that what the yeah the regulatory those, issues. what those types of things are and then what about a realtor we talked about that last time as well in the past people have said that it's helpful to know what the trends are and have been and how we can advise residents on the best way to remodel to match the demand does that seem like an important component so there Ellen <laughs> <laughs> I know in our conversations, a lot of time when we haven't had, we've often said, "Well, what, what, you know, what, what, what is, what's going on with up. the housing market? What, how do brick streets play into the value of homes, and and that's the saleability and those, those issues." There are a lot of times. There are times when that expertise would be handy to have. Uh, part of the problem is, you know, we we need a lot of different <laughs> areas of interest and expertise. Yeah. And the other thing is an architect. I mean, if we are going to advising advise folks about the things that will maintain the historical integrity of their properties which is something that's sort of in our charter and people can have indeed be actually come to us with a uh, request for advice about how to handle things uh, we need to have somebody with some architectural expertise who can actually help us to advise those people and archaeologists won't help you a whole lot there okay? <laughs> so architectural expertise um, obviously. Or design. Or design. Okay. Yeah. Realtor and historic preservation. Those are the three components. As far as skill sets that are the most important. There'll be nine total people on every board. Um, so don't, I, yeah, think about what you, you know, what you need and don't be afraid to ask for more. They have nine spots and they'll be overlap too. Obviously. Right. Well, and sometimes, yeah. right, you might. You might find someone who uh, knows a fair amount about historic preservation as an architect. Yes, you know? makes sense. <laughs> you know, you might or any of these in cooperation with a historian. Ah, yeah. Because that goes down to what does it mean? Uh -huh. Right. But you might have someone interested in environmental sustainability who's also knows a fair amount about it or is interested in historic preservation. Yeah. You know, so hopefully. Jackpot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that's the skills. Any other skills? I mean, you as a, you as a, I can facilitate this whole conversation or I can turn it over to you if you'd rather. No, no, that's the you're, you're, Okay. <laughs> you're, you're the one that needs to have this feedback. I need the information. Right yeah. Feedback, right. So. Oh, okay. Then the next one is current charter. Why don't we save that one for the end? Because that'll kind of incorporate everything else we cover. Historic district maintaining and possibly expanding. So what we talked about last time was um, we might want to enlarge the current historic district uh, or do fundraising to have a second historic district, such as in Sunset Hills, that's been discussed in the past. 
and is a frequent resident request, the hist a historic district must be, must be contiguous. Expanding the district is not very expensive or time consuming, but would require some time and volunteer effort. But creating a second historic district would be very time consuming and expensive. It's a very long application. Um, so expanding is easier than a second yeah. district. Because with expanding, you can use a lot of the background information you've already established. Mm -hmm. You know, and the boundaries that are established are based are fairly arbitrary. Basically, they work until they get to a point where there are too many non-contributing properties in a row, and they say, oh, "Okay, we'll stop here." And then maybe the fifth house down is a very mm -hmm. historic property, but they're left out because there's a big gap, and they and you can modify that somewhat. But of course, if you start doing when you start doing that, you also have to evaluate those properties maybe that no longer exist or no longer meet the criteria oh, because they've been modified. You know, you will have to tricky. evaluate it. So it's a, it is a, still a trick. It's not, it's not a real easy process. It's uh -huh. still a tricky process because you're now reevaluating a lot of properties. Uh, you know, you're not just adding the new ones. And but who you, does the evaluating just because I didn't go through the process originally. Is it Members of the board go down a street like Ann did with the signs and figuring out what what streets need well, them. We hired professionals you did. from okay. Skelly and Loy, I think, is the one who did it for us. Okay, this okay. year, and uh, it was it was a big grant, and it was like a multi year process of taking an inventory of I all believe forty four hundred yeah. properties, pictures. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it still will be expensive. Not as expensive as starting from scratch to create a new district with a new theme and a new, you know, background information. There's a lot of work that goes into that, that background that already exists. You wouldn't have to repeat, but the specific evaluation of properties and the and the continuous nature of arguing for being part of the district, you had to come up with an argument for why you can you need to expand the district to include that property. Maybe there's a cluster of properties that makes it worthwhile to. to to have a, an empty space of not contributing members. Um, but that we would have to hire a consultant a professional to do that for us if we were going to be doing that. And then the actual, the, basically we're making the argument and then it goes to the, the state level. The board there reviews it and approves it or not. Okay. Um, I've just emailed you all the establishing ordinance for the Historic Preservation Board, which lists some of these things, including um, the qualification of members. It originally had asked for uh, individuals with knowledge and interest in architecture, historic preservation, urban planning, historic preservation law, history, archaeology, American <laughs> studies, and other fields that may be useful in the process of historic and architectural preservation activities. I think you hit most of those in the. Mm -hmm. was a law was in there. Uh, historic preservation law. Yeah. That's that's along the lines of what Phil was saying yeah. with regard to um, asking for mitigations and things like that. Knowing knowing what we have a right to and. Mm -hmm. Is this in our big notebook too? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't know. Um, we re we recently had to dig up all of the establishing ordinances for all the groups because. Mm -hmm. Our um, solicitor has to go through each one to make sure that all of their duties are covered in the new structure and who will do them or rewrite them, mm -hmm. one or the other. But since the names are changing, it's going to have to be rewritten. So that's great. And then going back to the historic district, um, what's the advantage of having a historic district? What's the advantage? I mean, I have written down a couple of things like it gives us some power, influence, and control over design related matters with regulatory agencies, for one. Well, only when the federal government's involved. When the federal government's involved. When there's any licensing, permitting, funding at the mm -hmm. federal level, then we, that's when the regulatory, mm -hmm. the National Historic Preservation Act will kick in. And, but basically, other than that, there are no regula regulations on property owners. It does not put any restrictions yes. on anyone, right? Uh, it's a matter of establishing place and, and giving a sense of historic place and can add tourism value, can add property value. Um, 
There are tax credits for income producing properties, though. That's a tangible. But that's all, it's only for income producing properties. So it's, if you if you're renting the property, right. you can get a tax credit to renovate it, keep it in within historical standards. And somebody used that. Somebody renovated their duplex, mm -hmm. and um, that was the first person to take advantage of the tax credit. That's one of the few financial incentives. A historic place, um, sense of place, tourism value increases property value, and there are an occasional tax credit for income producing properties only. And it, they make you eligible for applying for certain types of grants. Okay. Uh, because if it's in a historic district, and I want that back in my mind, there are potential grants you could apply for, for instance, to try to develop innovative technologies, help develop uh, innovative technologies to preserve brick streets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just try to cover those costs. And uh -huh. so forth. I'm not sure what such a proposal would look like, but I mm -hmm. know that, for instance, is a possibility that exists because we have the historic district. Very good. Okay. Um, all right, historic district, what else? What's advantages? Um, how much time do we typically spend main, just maintaining it, basically? Hard to say. I know. Well, that depends, right? I mean, the municipality really only has a few properties that they directly have to worry about, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this building is one, <laughs> keeping maintaining its historical integrity, but obviously the brick streets is the biggest issue yeah. because that's our responsibility as municipality to preserve those as part, because they're an important contributing factor in our historic district because the transport, early 20th century transportation is our primary theme for being given the historic district designation. Historic district, or should I move on to the next one? Um, regulatory support, my favorite oversight for developments in our historic district, such as FCC requests. I know we talked about that a lot already, but I'll just read it for everyone who wasn't there or um, just so we're on the same page. There are federal regulations that help preserve designated historic districts. If someone has federal funding and permitting, they have to go through the historic regulations before they go through our planning board. This is time consuming and it requires volunteers who are proactively looking for these types of applications in Mount Lebanon. The HPB is not trying to prevent development. They want to consult and advise on how to, for example, install utility equipment that will have the least impact on the historic character. Um, one example was the 5G antenna on the corner of a street in the historic district. HPB was a consulting body, and um, I think we all know that story, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I can go on and on on that one. Um, but through, thanks to the work of the HPB, the Federal Agency of the Historic Preservation is now investigating this issue because Verizon intentionally misled the State of the Historic Preservation Office. Um, well, it wasn't for eyes, but they okay. had hired a firm to do it. A firm right? that they hired. Try leave consulting, and they are the ones who try to hide the fact that we had issues. We, we wanted to be a consulting party and, felt, and mm -hmm. felt that it would be a potential impact because they were arguing, trying to argue that there was no potential impact, and that they said that they had consulted with us, but all they really did was to planning folks yeah. and got their regulations and ignored the fact that we had sent them a letter. <laughs> it was a good catch. Mm -hmm. And so the HPB, in summary, can consult and give our opinion. This is one of the few areas that an advisory board can actually do something and have a big impact. We don't make the decision, but um, I think our right. opinion all, is all yeah. we are doing is, is saying we think it will be an impact and we would like to be a consulting party in any planning that goes forward. Yeah. Anything to add or any questions on regulatory support and oversight that HPB provides? 
they also act as a consultant for zoning changes with, with the planning uh, department. So usually if there are big changes, um, there's an opportunity to weigh in. What the type planning of, board or zoning? It's no planning, okay. it's, planning? but it's the, it's usually at the recommendation level for zoning changes. So mm -hmm. um, when's the last time that's happened? Long time. No, no. I mean, they, they usually make zoning tweaks every uh, five years or so on average. There will probably be some as a result of the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So it would be good to have that. Which is why we liaison with them so, so that right, right as soon as something comes up that might have an historic impact, we're right there right. and could comment. Mm -hmm. That's almost different than the regulatory support. That's a whole other kind of bucket. Right. That's more in house. Yeah. Whereas the other is external. Dealing with the state of Star preservation office. Besides planning, like and, and the planner, is there any other advice that we would go to? Any other boards or? Oh, oh we go yeah, to part of the meetings. But as far as our impact, I didn't even know we could advise on zoning and planning. I mean, I know we could have input during a meeting, but I didn't know we were a consulting party. Because that hasn't come up yet. Capacity. I mean, yeah. again, it's it's addressed in the ordinance where it says um, to perform such additional functions and duties as may be requested to assist the commission to review planning and zoning issues related to the historic character of the municipality. So, So after regulatory support, there's an educational component. And I'll just, the one kind of one sentence on that is we put on events and had national speakers in the past. The last one was called Good Design Makes Sense, made direct financial ties to restoration and development. Um, what other kinds of educational components? So have we done in the past or do we want to do? We want to make sure it happens in the future. There used to be a person that would go around to block parties and talk to residents about any, any Contributing structures and any information they had. I didn't see what for that. But. It was a uh, program in cooperation with Pittsburgh History and Landmarks. Do we want to keep that going long term? As a board, as the volunteer. Well, we're volunteer. We're on um, volunteers yeah, it, on the board it, going. It, we didn't have anybody to do it. I mean, it was a lot of training, it was devising scripts, research. Um, it was because Louise Sturgis, who was the head of Pittsburgh History and Landmarks, happened to be a Historic Preservation Board member, so she was able to have those resources, and we haven't had that type of um, assistance since she went. Okay. So that, yeah, yeah, that's one thing, right? This board, what it can, this board can do will vary with who's actually on the board. That's right. Yeah. And at, at certain points in time, we the board can take advantage of specific skills certain people are, who are currently on the board will have to do things. And so there have been a lot of really good publications and about design and, and architecture and that, that sort of stuff, which a lot of them are still posted on our website, which is part of our educational mission. But we had the expertise to put that stuff together in the past. I mean, now we could talk about how to dig a square hole on an archaeological site, but nobody really wants to hear about that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I started on the board and many of you did during COVID. So we haven't really had any oh, educational true. events. So it's very been very um, um other ones that were a little bit easier than the tours were going to first Friday. And um oh, that right. was the last one. Um Phil did it. Matthew was on it when we did it. Um basically just going out and starting conversations with people walking down the street. Um, with the map, asking them if they knew what it meant, it, handling some misnomers and misinformation, and then uh, just increasing awareness. That was one of them. Um, there was some conversation about maybe having some type of office hours where um, somebody could come in and ask questions about a renovation. You know, what are some things I might want to consider to keep this renovation historically accurate? Um, we also partnered with the community design design. Oh, BDP. 
Um, basically, it was a nonprofit in Pittsburgh that for $150 would come to your house and write you a preliminary, a kind of a sketch of what you can, would consider. It was very popular, but it was Community Design Center. Yes, that's it. Okay. Yep. Uh, but they don't they don't do that anymore. They they do it in communities, I believe, that have um, um, financial distress, financially mm -hmm. distressed, but yeah. But it was nice. There were a lot of people that got a nice, uh, good preliminary plan. Yeah. I just went to, there was an event in another municipality that I went to. They were opening a coffee shop. And so they invited um, lots of people from the municipality to come in and set up tables so that when the public came in to visit the coffee shop, they could learn more about um, the area. And so like they even have like the Boy Scouts there or the, the Allegheny Department of Aging. Um, you know, 412, where you could, they can pick up food or food. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, lots of resources for the community. I thought, and to me, I was like, oh my gosh, we should do this in Mount Lebanon. I thought it was so great. Yeah. So if we have a business opening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, First Fridays. Yeah. yeah. Great. Very good idea. Any other educational event ideas or things you've seen? Well, we're talking about maybe we were just starting getting a subgroup committee together to talk about new More. educational events. Yeah. And I one is is I know Ann had this idea, maybe sponsoring a workshop on uh, architectural design issues and things that can enhance your historic value or avoid destroying your historic value. Uh, we haven't really gotten very far with that, but we just started discussions of that. And for instance, in the mm -hmm. fall, it's one of our first sort of in-person things we've been able to do for a while. And I okay. think there's some money in the budget for this $1, year. $1,500, so. Yeah. To do something with it. So We did have an idea. I think we tabled it, but was um, having a Brick Street Symposium with other municipalities yeah. to pool, pool um, knowledge, how to finance it, all of that. It, it, I think we tabled it for, for the Well, that was in the proposal we sent forward to the commission mm -hmm. and the, the big right. proposal, first use proposal. Um, so, but that brings up a good point. And for the first meeting of the year, it's nice to create the work plan for the year. This could be maybe more like a 15 month work plan because October, um, April 1st next year, I believe, is the date that we're trying to target the boards to um, be in the new configuration. But um, I don't know if there's time today because it's 540 and we might want to keep this discussion going, but maybe at the next meeting or whatever you think is. Right. That's clear. something we need to yeah. sort of think about what we can and cannot do here in the next year. Right? Yeah, exactly. In, yes. in, in my, I think time. it's like to our advantage. Like, well, we don't have a lot on our plate that I'm aware of anyway. So it might be nice to pick up a couple big projects, show everybody what we can do. We've been, a, a, we did brick streets and we did the signs, which is great. But um, maybe show more outreach wise educational component, what we can do and what's possible, and that'll, that'll help carry it on by itself. The quieter yes. we are, the um, easier it is to forget, I think. Agreed. The relevance, not for me. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'll keep going. So, after um, educational components, the HPB serves as a resource for residents who are remodeling. That kind of goes under educational components, but we've met with residents providing free consulting, assuming we have in-house expertise that can do that regarding their potential remodel. Any, anything else on that one? Uh, okay, then um, the next one, we didn't quite capture. We liaison with a lot of other um, boards and groups. One of them is the historic preservation. That should obviously continue, right? We want to keep meeting with them, going to their meetings, partnering, makes sense. Um, and then you're already a liaison for the EDC, so that'll be redundant. Um, and the ESB, right? Planning board. Planning board. Planning. Okay, and so that should keep going. And the board. Partnership Design Committee, I don't know where that stands. Um, I was going to bring that up tonight. They actually are um, looking at um, putting together a design guide for the business district. They got a grant for it. So, um, yeah. So who's ever going to serve on that? I need to forward that name to Eric Milliron, who's in charge of that project soon. 
it may, it may not even be in time to go to this next meeting because it might be this week, but going forward. And what's that include? Uh, the partnership design committee, that's the, the part of the partnership that looks at the placemaking part of the vibrant uptown project. So they're looking at doing a design guide for um, like we did for the houses. They're looking at, at doing it for um, the main street. And that includes signage, right? No, design guide would just be um, basically guidelines, like voluntary guidelines that they could. Um, but for businesses, signs, right? Yeah. No, it's not just signs. It's like not just signs. Right. Structures. The structures, the whole right. thing, the facade. Yeah. Yes. Windows. I mean, the whole thing, just like we have for the residents, but yeah. again, optional, but um, they got a grant for it. Okay. I'm trying to talk Carmine, our resident, our current architect, I think, um, in that capacity, but he hasn't responded to it yet. Oh. That's very different. Do you want to try to get a backup person if he can't do it? Because it's, it's, so, it's moving fast, right? We want at least somebody on there that can report back. I'm already doing planning, <laughs> but I would, I would do partnerships and I have nobody. I'm not sure what that is, but okay. <laughs> okay. It should be somebody with a knowledge of design. Oh, that would not be. I'm more an urban planning type. Anybody better than nobody though, just to sit in and listen? I can't get somebody. And that's your first choice. Well, short term, Mary Ellen, would you be willing to give it a shot if? <laughs> well, as a realtor, you've got an interest in what these buildings look like, right? <laughs> and the next category is brick streets preservation. This is the last. This is the last one, big one. Um, is the municipality's historic property or biggest historic property? Is biggest publicly owned historic property? How will we maintain it? Um, Brick Street's policy calls for a region-wide summit on Brick Streets, as mm -hmm. mentioned. What else under Brick Streets? Well, it, the new policy is that, I mean, Public Works, as they are evaluating streets, uh, they will be supposed to be notifying us about any potential discussions of the middle of Brick Streets or what their plans are for streets so that we know ahead of time if there's going to be a potential issue. Mm -hmm. You know, because one of the things that spurred our creating that plan was when this large group of residents came to a meeting mm -hmm. back in 2019 because they knew nothing about it happening until the contractor showed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've already changed the guidelines right away, the public boards changed their guidelines. Back then, what they were doing was the contractor would, the contractor's orders, the contractor's responsibility was notification of residents. And we made the point, whoa, that's way too late. Well, the only thing I'll say is that did come in front of this board. Um, anytime a brick street was ripped up, the board had to be notified. So this board was notified, the chair at the time, um, because it wasn't in the historic district and because it was an emergency repair. Um, there were two streets that were included on that. There was, it was not just Duquesne, it was also Hills. And the board agreed uh, with us, but the board agreed that it was not um, something that they were going to back in terms of leaving it brick. So it did come in front of this board before it went out for bid. So. But there wasn't any element of public notification. Correct. There were letters. There were letters sent to them, and there were, and it was on meeting agendas and things like that. But nobody actually went and knocked on doors and said, "Hey, this is happening." So if you weren't if you weren't already engaged, you missed it. Right. So that was the reference complaint. It's paying nothing about it until basically the equipment was showing up on their streets. They were not happy. So that kind of that. That's everything that I captured. Where do we want to go from here to just kind of keep it, keep it going? This, I mean, it seems like someone should look at the charter, maybe compare it to this information, or want to spend more time on it. Want to talk about it at a future meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think. Why don't we keep it small? I work with 
you guys in terms of some of that and bring it to this board. Okay. And try to have an open discussion at the meeting time we are here. But why I'll Sorry. be happy to work with you guys Great. about looking at those charters and things specifically. Everything is covered with in terms of this board. So I'll send you the note, just you then, the notes that I just took. Is that great? Or do you want me to send it to the whole board and then people can respond to Phil if you have any other thoughts? Yeah, hey, you can send it to them. Okay. They don't have to read it. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> but we can say, oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Respond to Phil if you have anything you want to add. <laughs> no kind of. You know, take that, take the charter, and then come back to either me or this meeting, whatever you feel like is the next. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Mindy. Oh, let's mm -hmm. see, Georgia. Well, over, over view of what, what's happening with the consolidation, what we need to be thinking about. Oh, the other question we had was this um, in terms of appointments, though. Our understanding is that there will not be any new appointments. Like Anne's gone. Oh. And she won't be replaced. Everybody will be replaced. I'm sorry if that was unclear. So we. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I told them nobody was being replaced. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's what I just heard. So, so next commission meeting? Um, and there's that normal cycle, right, where we fill positions. Yeah, the, the empty, we're, they're talking about the current vacancies that we have. So they'll only be replaced April 1st of this year. Right, but they will be replaced for one year. For only one year, exactly. For only one year term. So you guys can hit quorum. Okay. Hit, hit quorum and do work. Sorry, if that wasn't clear. So they should be being advertised now. And I think that's the list that Ian would have given you. Is it Ian that can No, we were told that they weren't filling those positions because they didn't want to bring somebody on just for a year. That if somebody was term was up, they would be on for a year, but they didn't say they're bringing any new people on. So that's new. I'll double check that, but that was the last, that was my understanding of the last discussion was that we don't want to, we didn't want to bring anybody new in like the last quarter of last year because we weren't sure how long their term would be for, and it was just such a, for the, um, you know, for the um, MP positions, but then now that there's this regular advertising cycle, we can fill up, we can go through all the applications at the same time and then fill everybody up so that they can operate for the year. So I'll um, follow up with, besides you, is it? Ian, that's kind of like the point person on that with Keith. He is for the new boards, but not yes. for the old boards. So okay. the old boards, all of the staff liaisons would need to know because there's other boards that have had people leave as well that yeah. didn't know they were getting new people. So that's good. Okay. So and I'll like we haven't been promoting it for that reason. Yeah. So let me um probably Ian, you and Keith. Let me just get that clarified on right now. Um, I could be wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> you would know. I know. I, mean, I, I know it's all very easy. Because right now we're at six, right? What's that? We're at six no, people. Five. 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 Until April. But if you are if you are filling that, then she can resign if she really wants to, and you could fill that position and yeah and right. We do need to try to do that for. But people that were kind of on the fence, I was like, is anyone already here? Just try to for the comment. But I know it's a lot to ask. We need people that are able to work too. Yeah. Okay, I'll get you that question, Phil. Okay. Um. I think that's it for my report. Good report. Yeah. Scarlett, do you have anything you wanted to? I don't think so. I think all of us have to. Scarlett probably has a headache. Um, and Mindy, do you have anything else? Um, I just was maybe gonna talk about the budget was you know, completed and posted online. And if you guys have any questions about it, if you got a chance to look at it or anything, the things that um, HPB asked for were continued funding of work streets. So 
we did um, the additional, I think, $60,000 total additional. We did additional Brick Street for spot repair work, um, but there wasn't a separate reconstruction line item for Brick Streets that was funded because we want, the commission wants to see it as part of the total Brick, which the total streets reconstruction budget. So those conversations will be happening in the next month or two as we start to see what Public Works is recommending um, and how they to reconstruct, which streets get reconstructed. I haven't heard anything yet, um, if there's any brick streets on the list. But the understanding is that there are, we're trying to keep them brick, so that's gotta be considered into the process. And somebody says, I can say that again. So we have the 2.2 million we spend every year on reconstruction, and we're gonna have that conversation one time as we do every year, it's usually February, um, maybe March, and um, Public Works and Gateway or engineers give us recommendations on what the streets that need to be reconstructed based on usually their PCI OCI score, but there could be some other factors. And it has to, you know, their, their estimate has to range around 2.2 million. Now that they're factoring in, in brick streets, there's not as much brick street as it would be an asphalt street. So there have to be less total miles that are being recommended to be reconstructed for brick streets on that list. Um, there were some, we're not keeping 100% of our brick streets, it's closer to 90% is the goal. Um, and so there might be some streets that for some small reason were just a steep dead end, um, not connecting to other brick streets and that might not make the cut, but the majority of our brick streets should be. The goal is to fund them to be reconstructed in order. Knowing that means that we'll do less asphalt that year. If that's what we do, or some, or, or we find the funding in some other way. So the sixty thousand is for. There's always the spot um, repair work. Spot right? repair work. Okay. okay. Do you remember the number exactly? I don't. Know. It's it's six it's like sixty three. Was... And then two or three years ago, it was less, but recently we said we want to do a little more because it just helps with the longevity of the streets. Absolutely. Uh, or anything. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, I have a memo that just came to me from Ian with an update on the comprehensive plan. So I will be sending that all to you. So um, it's it's going well. He just there's some. Um, I guess I can put some of it. Um, there are going to be some um, focus groups coming up. So it's it's going to ramp up. Is it February? Um, there'll be three meetings. That's, okay, that's um, but it, it will involve Phil. Phil is your rep to the, to the oh, yeah. comprehensive yeah. plan. So um, I'll send you the memo. It's really long. <laughs> I don't want to misquote it. So, um, and then I'll talk about historic signs when we get to that item. So okay. we did hire a police chief. Um, I, I, that didn't happen since we were at last officially convening. So Jason Haberman um, is the new police chief. Okay, well then historic signage is back. Oh, I'm sorry. So we'll just go right into that. Um, I'm going to share the screen with you. Share the screen. <laughs> Hello. Um, so if you remember when we awarded the contract to um, the sign company for the production of the signs, we had asked for two sample signs because Public Works wanted to make sure before they did um, $59,000 worth of signs that they worked well. So we got two of them. This sign does not really um, explain how heavy it is. It's it's aluminum, it's, it's massive, it's very heavy. Um, they put one on here because that's a long named street and then they put a small one on Salem because it's a smaller name. Um, already we have had one car accident. They hit the, the Salem sign when it was hit. They stole the sign. Oh, so people, ready? Uh, oh, love the sign. Yes, they stole it. Did they commit it on purpose so they could steal the sign? I highly doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> it was an act like a car accident. So trust me, they did more damage to their car. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, but it was just like, oh, and, and, and who knows? Maybe they hit it left and somebody else came up. But yeah, they, they took the sign. So we only have one out there now. The rest have been ordered. Our actual issue was when we ordered the fabrication of the signs, we allowed for the width of the aluminum sign, 
but when we sent the measurements, we did not allow for the width of the stickers. Each Mount Lebanon sign has two stickers on each sign, a full length white sticker, white reflective sticker, and then a full length brown one with the, with the street reversed out. So actually, I didn't know this, it's not white letters on a blue on a um, brown background, it's a brown overlay on a white background. Really? So there are four stickers on every sign, which means there was by millimeters, um, it was too thin. So the only way they got it on here is our public works actually had to take razor blades and cut out the stickers on the sign to get it to fit. So before we actually ordered them, we asked them to reconfigure um, that. So that's what the delay is. If you're asking what the delay is, we wanted to make sure that it worked. So, um, so they are now on order. They should be in. Anne has turned the map and the spreadsheet into Public Works. There's 239 intersections that she has allocated um, that made sense. We've ordered 250 signs, so we will replace the one that was um, <laughs> purloined. Um, but you can see that I think they look pretty nice. So. If I may, someone worked just the historic district sign or the whole street sign? Yes, both. The name, oh. the name sign and the historic district sign. It's probably sitting in somebody's man cave right now. They're feeling all happy about right. it. All right. Right. Yeah, but it's $250. So if anybody's watching this um, meeting and thinks that there might be something that they have, uh, it, it's expensive at taxpayer expense. So please don't do it. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, the whole thing is 250. Mm -hmm. Well, the historic part, I don't know how much the aluminum sign is probably a little bit less, but the street name sign. I'm assuming, and then the labor to put it back. Yeah. I'm assuming the Salem sign wasn't in the vicinity of a police camera. We have those cameras <laughs> in there. <laughs> no, we don't have very many cameras. No, yeah. most of them are at major intersections. Right. So, might be somebody's ring camera. Exactly. That's where it's the ring, it there you go. The ring yeah. and the nest doorbells. My 16 year old just got her permit. So if we run over any signs, we will be sure. So there's basically nothing that this board needs to do now for the, for the next round. Again, if it comes up again as part of the design conversation with Vibrant Uptown, there may be some signage opportunities with Uptown that may dovetail with this signage package or other things. So that would be um, your. Um, thing going forward to keep yours open for that. So basically, Mary, I'm not, there shouldn't be anything to do. <laughs> <laughs> so if it comes up, we'll let you know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to look for that sign. So. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> the first job. <laughs> Find that sign. Give her a badge. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brick streets, we've pretty much covered where we are with that. Uh, education. Uh, given the time, I don't know how much detail we can go in here. We do need to try to plan what we're going to do. I mean, we don't have. We lost hands. <laughs> yeah. Hands leadership here. Yeah. Uh, now, one, yeah, I, I did get an email from Anne about how uh, she has one contact with the Historical Society. Um, uh, Alyssa Jones, who is excited about the idea of uh, doing uh, an event. Uh, and we have some money to do that. And Anne was suggesting a workshop where uh, we can help people to understand the impact of different design choices on historic properties. Um, we would have to get use the funds to get actual architects involved to do such a workshop. Uh, but so that's one possibility. And she said she'd be happy to help brainstorming architects since she knows the architectural community pretty well. So. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to take the lead with this or. We think about it. Yeah, I. Uh, 
with only five members. And I was just saying that might be something for one of the new people to do. Yeah. Just because you, if nobody here is interested, you might. Right. Um, I'm afraid to bite off more than I can chew. Right. I know that's what we're all trying to avoid. Right? Um, I think that sounds like a pretty decent. I know, it, but I wasn't part of that subcommittee, so I don't know what your their discussions were. Thank you, Mariana. Did you guys actually meet? You were you and Anne. You and Krista and Anne were going to maybe get together, or I don't. It never progressed even that far. Uh, so I think it's a it's a reasonable idea. I mean, because we've got the money, and as many were saying, we need to do something to be visible. So I think we we'll can explore that. Uh, maybe try to keep Anne involved a little bit too. I know she's got a lot on her plate now that she's a commissioner. You guys are busy. But she, yeah, but she cares. So she doesn't want. She does. She cares. So she, she does, does care. So small. And she did make the mistake in her email saying, I am happy to help. But we might do this in conjunction with the historical society, maybe even oh, they would right. find the space. I don't know how much space they have, but yeah. Um so anyway, that's that's a possibility. So um or you okay. said they filled the auditorium for the good design makes good sense. Like yes. That. But I mean, it was, it was probably a good nine, 10, 11 months of planning marketing. They had an advertising budget. They made, um, it was very well done. Okay. But they did. Yes. Right, well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, comprehensive plan. I just wanted to comment. I mean, the, you know, the survey and all the data is in, and, and I don't know if any of you guys have had a chance to go online to send and look at their the website there, some of those results about what are the things, uh, what are the priority issues? And the priority issues, you know, recs and park facilities, recreation and park facility came out on top. Historic stuff wasn't on the top. <laughs> but, but when you look at the questionnaires about the, the sentiments people have, and they ask specific questions, the top response was that people strongly agreed with the statement that future development or redevelopment should respect Mount Lebanon's historic character. So that was number one. So we're still in the game. <laughs> so as Laura mentioned, they're gonna start, and then she just found out, working with focus groups for the next phase. And sort of complete that first phase, so that is progressing. Um, Economic Development Council, Matt, anything to report there? Yep, yeah. So I was not able to attend the December meeting, but I'll give you my quick summary on the November meeting uh, that was on November 18th. Couple of points number one, having to do with mobility. So at that, they, they discussed the draft complete streets policy. And I think at that point, the commission was to vote on the policy up or down on November 22nd. So Mindy, I'll ask if you have any recollection of, of what happened because it wasn't clear to me what was gonna come out of that because the, the draft complete streets policy didn't have any reference to the, to the brick streets policy. And we asked um, Anna Seifkin and I, provided edits, proposing at least a couple of references to it so that when action is taken relative to complete streets, it's taken with cognizance of the fact that we've got this other policy that might inform as well about how a street is to be designed or redesigned. Um, and in any case, that reference didn't make it into the draft policy through a couple of iterations. And then at the November meeting, Ann and I noted that again, Anna Seifkin and I noted that again. And I think that the impression I had out of that meeting was that there were going to be further edits to that policy before it was presented to the commission. Um, so the first so did reference the HPB and it did have some, I think some of your edits, but maybe not all, is that right? I think that's right. Because uh, yeah, I could, I'm pulling it up two months ago. Um, I think I emailed it to you. I'm looking at it. Um, but I don't know. 
like all the entire history of how it went, went back and forth, but the version right. I saw sure. that we approved, um, it does mention here, I see the section here. And I think, exceptions, right? I'm sorry, say again. Under the, sec except the section called exceptions, section four. Um, right. Roadways, I, let's see, you said, you. I think you edited it to say roadways that have been determined to have historical value due to their brick surfaces as defined in any brick street policy shall conform to said policy and be exempt from any complete streets provision. Is that what you wanted in? Um, I think that that will suffice. Um, and, it, and it's maybe not exactly the verbiage that I was looking for, but bottom line is, I think it'll suffice so long as reference is made to this other policy. And it sounds like it it was. I think when this was going back and forth, I had the sense um, that this wasn't, you know, this reference wasn't a particular priority for the for the economic development council. And, you know, and as we continued to advocate for that reference, it sounds like it did eventually show up. And to me, I would I would accept that. Okay. So I don't, you know, bottom line is I don't think that that complete streets policy needs to be held up further on this issue. Um, how about if I just double check and get the version, the latest version that we have on the books and send it to you, Matt, to make sure. But if, but if there is anything that you're seeing that, you know, doesn't really work, let me know. When I talked to, I think you last on it, you said you didn't really want the, the brick streets to supersede or to be more important than complete streets is kind of more you want them on the same footing. And I agree with that. And I don't know if that's really captured in the complete streets policy. As I think there, there could be nuances. I think so, to me, so long as it makes reference to it so that whoever's evaluating this complete streets policy and, and thinking about what changes would be made to the design of streets, you know, bricks, the brick streets policy may or, may or may not be front and center to them. What yeah. we wanted is a reference to it so that they're aware of it while they're making these other decisions. I think, so if I may, going forward, was the complete streets policy adopted by the commission? Yes. Okay. Then if you, yeah, just send me, if you would, that the, the, the adopted draft. I'm okay. pretty sure that that sufficed from my and Anna's perspective. Yes, I and just, I, I don't think I don't think we're looking to wordsmith it further if it's been adopted. And but it's okay. I mean, I, I think it's also okay to update policies too as we learn more and grow. So don't if you feel like something's kind of not going to work, then let's let's hear it. You know, okay. so take a and, look. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you'll send me that, I'll take a look at it then. Okay. Thank you, Laura. You're on it. Okay. Um, second point was economic vitality. So at that point, the vibrant uptown construction project was intended to be completed by the end of December. And as I walked up through uptown the other day, it's clearly not done. And my wife asked me what the status was, and I had to say, I don't know. Um, so bottom line is, this is much more the Economic Development Council's problem than ours. But bottom line is, They've continued, it continues to be, I think, a thorn in Eric's side um, going forward. Uh, the, the last point, this is about the commercial districts update. And I offer this not so much as a, a historic preservation issue as a general consumer issue of the intended bagel store project is not moving forward due to lease issues. And certainly my, that's an issue in my household. <laughs> <laughs> but on the plus side, the East End Brewing is moving forward and there's a coffee and record shop being developed on Castle Shannon Boulevard. So that that's good news aside from the bagels, bagel store <laughs> situation. Okay, sorry, that's my report. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Historical side of what Krista just left up. I mean, Krista is still working, keeping in contact with those folks. And like I said, they have and did talk to them about uh, a possible uh, education event. And then we have a contact there so that uh, we get moving on that. We'll let, we can work with them. 
uh, planning board. Okay, so planning board. I have two meetings to cover here. So um, the October meeting, you know, they're, these planning board meetings are always the day after this meeting. I know. So <laughs> my reporting is kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, so October's was that, um, do you remember the residence of the Poplar down by on Pennsylvania Avenue near the T line? Those were going to, there were four lots being consolidated and it would be five different duplexes. Anyway, it's been pretty contentious with the public showing up and not being happy about it. Um, they did agree to table uh, approving the plan um, until they had a chance to meet with the developer in private. Um, and they actually addressed my question that Ann suggested I ask about using nicer materials on the mm -hmm. facade of the building. And um, Ian did say, please bring us samples to see. We wanna see what you're gonna put on there. We'd like some higher quality, higher quality materials around the windows. So anyway, that was, that was good. Good advice from Ann. Um, so yeah, that did get tabled and that was it. That, that meeting was pretty, um, that was pretty much it. Oh, there was a little bit of a report on the comprehensive plan from Ian, but I think he's covered most of that. Okay, so as far as the no, the November meeting, I was not able to go. I think I tried to, tried to get Bill. I, I need your phone number. Emailing is just not a good idea. Anyway, it doesn't give people enough notice. So anyway, but I will just tell you what they did talk about. There's a, a structure or a little house on Rob Hollow. It's, um, it's a little house and has a garage next to it and then an empty lot. So there are three lots. And this gentleman wants to buy, tear down the house, another tear down, keep the uh, garage and just basically redo all these three lots into one property. Anyway, uh, um, they are gonna meet with the resident later, but that is another tear down. Again, I was not at the meeting, so I couldn't, couldn't ask questions or anything about what was gonna be rebuilt, but that would be a good thing to ask. Although, Rock Hollow, is that in the historic district? I didn't even show that. It's not. So maybe, maybe I don't have any standing there to ask that. But. but anyway, so that's one thing. The other was again more comprehensive plan um, update from Ian. And I just read the minutes basically and thought I'd bring you what they said. Um, but one thing he he noted, and I don't know if you touched on this uh, or not, Phil, but he said, and I noticed this, I also went to the comprehensive planning meeting on behalf of the board, because Phil couldn't make that meeting. But what was interesting that they've seen a marked increase in the number of people who have moved here from out of state, specifically mm -hmm. to Mount Lebanon. And the comp plan service, yes, right? that's the comp plan. Yeah, yeah. So attracting that, that was, out of state. Yeah, we're attracting out of state residents. So that is that is really cool. I mean, the, I can't remember what the exact percentages were, but he mentioned that in, in his- Like 20 or something, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. Yes. And also the number of residents who've lived here more than 20 years has decreased. Mm -hmm. So we do have more new people coming in. This was the main thing. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was, that was it. I just thought I'd put, bring that up, that we're attracting people out of date. And I think one of the things might be the character of our community. Yeah. People move here because they're really great architectural structures that create a lot of character. Anyway, so that's it. That's my report. I didn't hit the December meeting because I was very sick. I had the flu. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. It's been a, it's been a tough it's couple months. Rough winter. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough winter. Um, right, the partnership design committee, or you mentioned that they're meeting some, having a meeting coming up fairly quickly. Can you look into the see whether you can attend that or not for this time? Do you have a list of the dates? The partnership, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I can, I can try to get them from Eric. Design committee meetings, yeah. that one. Yeah. It's yeah. not on the website. No. It's not a public meeting. Oh, oh they're right. like small kind of like planning meetings with the yeah. work. Um, yeah, they're not recorded or. I mean, I don't know, maybe they zoom in the invites. I well, did get a response. I am trying to get Carmine to do this, so I'll still keep working on him. Okay. But in the meantime, maybe just to have somebody keep tabs of what they're doing. Let me know where to go. I appreciate that. 
I did get a response to from Ian regarding the open spots. Did you see that one, Laura? Yeah. Through? So we um we we will fill them. We'll fill them okay. and the person will show up in April. So right. they'll be advertised early February and then filled in March and then they're they're effective April 1st. We will so have, have to two seven. open spots actually. Yeah. Right. Two unless there are there any people that are terming out all four, but Yes. And then we'll just see what happens a year from now. So exactly. <laughs> so more more people for at least the next year after okay. that. Following one year. We'll give them to be ready and hand them some work immediately. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the good of the order? You know, take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Sure. That's good enough. All right, our next meeting will be Monday, February 20th. Yeah, ignore the cancellation thing. I forgot to take that off the December. <laughs> when you were talking about canceling the December 20th. So. I thought maybe it was on there because no, nope. they're like, <laughs> nope, it's happening. It's You're coming. We just don't know yet. Yeah. There is no possibility for cancellation. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, we are adjourned. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.